Throughout history, there have been many attempts to steal the body of Prophet ﷺ. Why do they want to steal the body of the Prophet ﷺ so badly? Why have they all been constantly unsuccessful? And why was his body so valuable to steal? Or who was stopping them? Get ready for what you are about to hear because it's going to give you a goosebumps. In the 12th century during the Seljuk Empire, the Pope and his priests came up with a plan to harm those who follow in the footsteps of Prophet ﷺ. The plan was to damage both the religion and the state by stealing Prophet's body and taking it to Rome. The Pope promised his men more than treasures of Pharaoh and tasked them with carrying out this mission. He gathered his most talented men and delivered a persuasive speech, promising them if they were successful in bringing Muhammad's body to Rome, they would be honored with Jesus and their names would be written in history. So after coming up with the plan to steal the body of the Prophet from his tomb in Medina, they knew they had to be careful. So two men dressed up as Muslims and started a long journey from Europe to Medina. Pretending to be on a pilgrimage to visit the Prophet's grave. Once they arrived, they rented a house nearby Thom on the side of Qibla of Medina Mosque. They wanted to blend in as much as possible, so they pretended to be a devout Muslims who prayed in the mosque every day and visited Prophet's tomb regularly. They were very friendly and helpful for, to the poor in the area, which helped them to win the trust and affection of the locals. But while they were putting on these acts during the day, they had something else entirely in mind for the night. They secretly started digging a tunnel from the rented house to the Prophet's tomb so they could steal his body. They worked on this tunnel night after night, making sure they were being as careful and discreet as possible. It was definitely a risky and dangerous plan, but they were willing to do whatever it took to get their hands on the Prophet's body. To avoid being caught, they filled their pockets with soil and pretended to visit the graves at Jannat al-Baqi cemetery the next day. After many sleepless nights, they had almost reached the Prophet's tomb through the tunnel they had dug. They thought they had completed the mission, but they did not expect a miracle to happen. Mahmoud Nurdin Zinki, a Muslim leader who ruled over Syria one night after praying to Hajjud, Nurdin had a dream in which he saw two men with blonde hair who were trying to harm Prophet's body. In his dream, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Mahmoud, save me from these two men. Mahmoud Nurdin Zinki woke up feeling anxious and scared after the dream and went to perform ablution and pray to Raka pray. Later that night, he dreamed the same dream again. The Prophet asked him to save him from these two blonde men once more. But this dream was not the end. On the same night when Mahmoud saw the same dream for the third time, he called his wazir at midnight and told him about his dreams. The wazir interpreted the dreams and said, Our Prophet has given you an order. We must go to Medina immediately. When we will get there, we will understand. Upon hearing this, Mahmoud quickly left for Medina with his wazir and Karoli without informing anyone. When they reached Medina, they visited Prophet's mosque and bought a lot of gifts to give to the people there. Governor of Medina was surprised of his sudden visit and asked him the reason for his visit. Mahmoud Nurdin told the governor about his dream. The governor then gathered everyone so that Mahmoud could share his gifts and uh, at the same time identify the two men. When people gathered, they asked everyone to write down their names so they could get a gift and the people came forward one by one. But despite looking at everyone's faces, Closely, Mahmoud couldn't find the two men he had seen in his dream. After everyone had received the gifts, Mahmoud asked if there were anyone left. And the governor of Medina said there were two people from Andalusia who had received their gifts and they were staying near the mosque. So Nurdin Zinki called them over to see if they were the ones he had seen in his dream. When the two men arrived, Mahmoud Zinki was so surprised to see the two blonde men he had seen in his dream standing right in front of him. He asked them who they were and where they were staying. They said they were from Andalusia. And and uh, had come to visit Prophet's mosque, so Nurdin Zinki wanted to see their place. When they got there, everything seemed normal. But Mahmoud Nurdin Zinki noticed some straw on the ground. He put his hand on the straw 
and something amazing appeared from the underneath it. A big tunnel was found under the straw. The two men were caught and the sultan's soldiers put pressure on them to talk. The two men told all the plans one by one. They said they were not Muslims and they had received special training for years to steal the body of the prophet and take it to Rome. So the next day, the two men were executed by Nordin Zinke. After this incident, Nordin ordered a trench to be dug around the sacred chamber and the trench was filled with molten lead to prevent any future attempts to steal Prophet Muhammad body. Many different groups fought and tried to claim ownership over the Prophet's legacy or in this incident want to damage both religion and the state by stealing the Prophet's body and taking it to Rome. Regardless of the motives, it's important to note that every attempt to steal Prophet's body has failed. This failure can be seen as a testament to the protection and honor that Allah granted his messenger. As the Quran said in Surah Maida, O Messenger, Allah will certainly protect you from the evil of men. Surely Allah will not guide the unbelievers to succeed against you in this incident shows that Allah protects his messenger and those who harm him will face punishment in this world and the hereafter.